Good day, this is Leadership TV News at noon. I am Cynthia Onwado. Begin now in Ibadan, where the National Emergency Management Agency has disclosed that over 20 houses were affected in the Tuesday night explosion that rocked the Bodija area of Ibadan, or your state capital. In a statement on Wednesday, NEMA said there was no information yet on casualty figures. According to Punch, it further revealed that a suspected improvised explosive device caused the explosion. On Tuesday night, panic gripped Ibadan residents over an explosion that occurred at Dejo Yelese Street in Bodija area of the city. Reacting to the incident, the state governor, Shea Makinde, said preliminary investigations by security agencies revealed that explosive devices stored by illegal miners caused the explosion that rocked the area. Mackinday, who visited the explosion scene Tuesday night, said that though further investigations were still ongoing, anyone found guilty will be brought to book. He also revealed that the medical bills of victims will be picked up by the government while promising to ensure that all those whose houses were affected were supported to rebuild their lives. Moving on now to Kaduna State, the Timboko village community in Kidadad Ward, Giwa local government area of Kaduna State, have staged a peaceful protest against the prevailing banditry and security challenges in the area. The protesters, numbering in the thousands, including both young and elderly individuals who marched to the Zazao Emirate Palace in Zaria. Malam Yusuf Jibrin, speaking on behalf of the community, with a voice laden with emotion before breaking into tears, narrated the harrowing experiences of the community due to persistent bandit attacks. In response, the Emir of Zazao, Malam Ahmed Nuhumba Mali, while expressing his condolences with to the community, assured them that his commitment to addressing their concerns. He pledged to escalate the matter to the relevant authorities for necessary and prompt action. And now the Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, NCS Bashir Adeniyi, has stated that the service will only we use rather only the exchange rate of the official CBN window for clearing of imported goods and would engage in arbitrary increase or decrease in exchange rate. According to Adeni, the policy of merging the multiple exchange rate windows has repercussions on the operations of the NCS. He also mentioned that the Nigeria Customs Service does not independently fix its exchange rate for goods and clearance, but only updates its system based on what is on the CBN's official window. And now to some entertainment news, rapper Sean Diddy Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, has withdrawn all allegations of racism against drinks giant their jail, according to a statement released by the London-based Spirits firm. In a joint statement, Combs and Diageo, which owns companies or brands such as Guinness and Temporary, said they have now agreed to resolve all disputes between them. The withdrawal comes six months after the termination of their business partnership. And now to sports news, the Nigerian Football Federation has explained the circumstances that led to forward Sadiq Umar leaving the Super Eagles AFCON 2023 camp and then appearing in a video where he's seen training at his club, Real Ciudad. Umar was among those who initially made Jose Pesiero's 25-man list for the AFCON but was not deemed fit enough by the medical team of the Super Eagles after an injury he suffered in the side's last pre-tournament friendly against Guinea. He was then replaced by Paul Onwachu. Football fans, however, berated the medical team and questioned its competency after Sadiq Omar was seen training and ended up on the Real Sociedad squad for Wednesday's Copa del Rey clash against Osasuna. Taking to X, the NFL defended the professionalism of its medical team and described the reports as not a true representation of what actually happened. 
And now to the Afghan games, Hamari Torre and Lassin Sinai Ko scored within six second half minutes to give Mali a 2-0 Africa Cup of Nations Group E victory on Tuesday over South Africa, who missed a penalty. Fesito fired a spot kick wide in the opening half in Kologo and it proved a costly miss as the Clico Eagles were never in danger after netting twice. Victory took Mali to the top of the group on goal difference from Namibia who shocked Tunisia 1-0 in the first match of a double header. Mali are a boogie team for South Africa having twice eliminated them in the quarterfinals in previous Cup of Nations meetings. On that note, to end the news on Leadership TV. For more of our news stories, you can log on to our website, www.leadership.ng. Many thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. For sponsorship and advert placements, please contact... 080-3688-6158 Last Word Leadership Podcast Studio You have the last word.